The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Clean Nation. Mike Campion here with Caesar Lira. Caesar started Benia Brito's house uh, service March 2013 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I believe they serve residential commercial clients. Um, first and foremost, Caesar, what on God's green earth is a Vanilla Brito? What's that mean? Okay, Vanilla Brito is my partner name. Um, so uh, let me tell you a long, short story. Um, 2013, um, she started this, uh, this business. And um, so we, we'd be a friend. Um, we had a group of friends and we, we, we'd be a friend. And uh, so uh, we decided to start together and she, she already had the, the business. So, and the Venue Brito, it's a, uh, it's a cool name. People, pe- people seem to be like interesting name. And we will say, let's, let's, let's keep it up. Venue Brito House Service. And uh, it works perfect. So, and uh, we had a lot of, wo- lot of hard work. And uh, we've been seeing the results. We've been seeing the results. Um, uh, right, now, right now, what I can say, we have a big dream. And we have a goal to achieve. So that's what I can say. Cool. So um, congrats on that. That said, what's going on in your world? How can I help you today? Uh, today, um, so we have some things that uh, uh, we like to improve, uh, like training people, training people, uh, make, to them, make them the, to understand uh, to this is this, this place. So they're they going to go, they're going to go to a different level. So if they help this company, um, so they, they will help themselves. So, and, uh, that's one thing that how, how I can train the people and, and, uh, how, um, make them understand to stay and uh, have the, the, the people work for this company for long term. So it will be easy to, to keep it up all the clients, to keep the, the relationship with the clients for long, long time. So right now, what I can say, we have a lot of clients. That's been with us for. So hold on, uh, hold on, hold on. Let's, we we got to get to a question so I can answer. What's okay. the specific question you've got for me, uh, Caesar? The training. I'll say. Uh, what did you say? Uh, the best uh, way to train people. Sure. So a couple of things. First and foremost, we've got to set reasonable expectations for the cleaners we've got, right? So if our expectations are unreasonable, you'll focus on the wrong spot, right? So, and I know this isn't your question, but let's assume or pretend you wanted a hundred percent. Um, or zero percent turnover, and one hundred percent of the people that you hired to stay for a year. And obviously, you know that's ridiculous. But if that was your goal, I could train you till the end of time, and you could work for the end of time on training your people, and you're never going to hit that goal. So, for all of our customers or all of our employees to stay with us and grow and grow and grow for a cleaning job is not a reasonable expectation, right? Like if I'm hiring someone for middle management and I want them all to look for upper management. That's reasonable. But the truth of the matter is, if you're hiring someone for a cleaner, that may just be what they're going to do for this time in their life, right? Like a lot of us, when we were younger, worked in fast food, right? We worked at a McDonald's or whatever. And we might have been there for two months. Maybe we were there for a year and a half. Who knows? But 99% of us did not go up the corporate ladder and become an assistant manager and then a manager and then a manager of multiple. Like it's just not an, an opportunity that has a lot of growth built in. Right. So if McDonald's was like 100 percent of the people that come here have to grow and love, love what we're doing and blah, blah, blah. If that was their standard, they're not going to they're not going to do so well. Right. They, now, that doesn't mean they can't offer growth and the people can't be connected and attach to their vision and their dream. That's all possible. But we just have to make it reasonable. So, again, if I'm paying someone seventy thousand dollars a year and he's in middle management, the expectations I'd have for him or her and his connection to my community is going to be different for someone that might be working 20 hours a week, making $15 an hour cleaning toilets, right? So if I, if I have the same expectation for different, different people, that's just not a reasonable expectation. Like certain jobs are just high turnover. So what I would do, my coaching to you would be, I would change my goal and my vision and my hopes and dreams from everybody's connected. Everybody stays a long time. Everybody is down with my cause. Everybody kind of leaves better than they want to, I would probably just keep the, everyone leaves better than they came and everyone is connected with our vision while they're here. And 
you know, maybe the minimum, I, the average I want people here might be six months. But when I had cleaners, if they said, hey, I'm leaving your job for another cleaning job where I make 30 cents extra an hour, I feel that was a failure on me. If they said, hey, I was working, you know, for six months because I, I wanted to take my, my family to the you know, home to the Philippines or whatever for Christmas, um, and I've done that and I'm leaving, I'm okay with that, right? Like that's a re, you know, not I stayed two weeks just for a couple hundred bucks, but I stayed six months and I had a goal. Or even better, you know, I was working a, a, a full time job during the day that didn't quite pay the bills and then I worked this to kind of supplement my income. Um, but now I got a better job and I can just make all the money I need with that one job. God bless. I'm super happy for them. Right. So as long as they leave better than they came, as long as I feel like the time that they spent with me, they grew emotionally, maybe spiritually, maybe as people. Um, and they really live by the core values that I, that I have while they were here. That's all I expect now for middle or upper management. I'm going to have a different expectation, right? That's not a, that's not an okay goal, but for a guy making 15 bucks an hour to put his hand in the toilet for him to be like, you're a 20 year career, man. That's unreasonable. So I'm happy to talk a little about training, but is that any questions or comments or thoughts on the expectations of setting expectations before we talk about how to fulfill those expectations? Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you answered the question. Um, I, and I understand that some, most of the people, um, they stay for six months, for one year and they, they, they leave. I understand that. Um, so, I think uh, one of the things that we we should um, we have we need to have like uh, some um, uh, skills to have more uh, uh, people to you know so so people live and have have another a lot of other people that are interesting to to work here even if they they they, they want to work for a month or two but while they're here so so they do their best. And uh, we was able to to keep it up. The client satisfied. The client satisfied, and uh, we I think that uh, that, that that way uh, we will be able to to continue in, in, in um, grow the company. Yeah. Yeah. So that's part of it. So setting expect resetting expectations that are reasonable, and a lot of times owners do that. We expect a lot from ourselves, which is fine if it's reasonable, but when it becomes unreasonable, it's like, well, that's not fair. We're going to beat ourselves up for, again, if your thing was zero turnover, well, that's insane. You're never going to, you're always going to be unhappy with yourself because that's not reasonable. So yes, two things. One, you made a perfect next assumption, which is, well, if I'm just going to have to deal with a high turnover business, now I still want to be lower than others, right? The average person staying seven days, that's that's not, that's not okay. The average person okay. staying five months, six months for a cleaning job, that's that's just fine, right? So oh, I see. now are some going to say two or three or four or five years? Sure. Are some going to lead quit on their first day or not even show up the first day? Sure. So we kind of have to go with the averages. Um, I love what you said about, I guess the solution then is to have a hiring funnel where I have more people wanting in than that covers both the growth, right? Because every time you get a new client, you're going to need a new portion of an employee. Uh, yeah. And my turnover. So that's a thousand percent yes, as we need systems and processes that bring more qualified applicants than you can possibly hire um, every month. That's that's the solution. But before we do that, there is something you can do, not just you, but Cleaning Nation that I want to encourage. When it comes to training, so again, if the goal is to make everyone stay for 10 years, I have no training solution for that. If you're you or anyone in Cleaning Nation is going, my average people stay a month and I want them to stay four months. Okay, that we can help you with. So the big thing is we often try and hire people based on skill and train for attitude. We want to do the opposite. We want to hire for the saying is hire for attitude, trade for skill. What I would say is hire for a core values match, which would be attitude. So for us, we only hire people that want to have fun and make money and help out and be real. Um, so we don't look for people that aren't that, that will pretend to be that while they work with us. We look for people that are already that. They love having fun in their real life. They're completely real. They want a job where they can help out and they value making money. And when they already want that, now when they're here, all I have to do is encourage them and kind of blow wind beneath their sails as opposed to trying to make them into a mold I'm not. So when it comes to training, I would focus 85% of my time on who they are, how they show up as people and 15% on cleaning. You know as well as I do, this isn't rocket science, right? We don't need people that know thermal dynamics and graduated from MIT and have a very specific That's skill set. We need people that are going to show up and have fun and have a good attitude and help their fellow man and, and want to and be a nice person and be reliable, like things like that. So 
when the training is, I'm going to focus on 85% who they need to be. And beautiful. the cool thing is like, we want them to leave better than they came. If we teach them how to show up at a job core values based, that's going to serve them the rest of their life. So it'll serve them while they're here. And when they leave and they go to the next job, they'll make a lot more money when they go. Maybe I don't have a lot of skill set, but man, I have fun. I make money. I'm real. and I'm going to help out. And I'm, I'm going to be a great attitude. I'm, you know, like in sports, they call it a good guy in the locker room, right? That guy's, you know, yeah. he helps the other guys be better. That's a skill that we can translate, right? Everyone that's a cleaner may not have the skill to be a rocket surgeon or a rocket surgeon, a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon at some point, but they can all be a good core values match. So that's where I'm going to spend my time training. And I think you can, and I'm not saying your turnover is that high, but if you were getting an average guy stay a month, you can get that up to five or six months. Um, but you know, five years is unrealistic. You combine that core values based hiring and training with a system that brings in more people than you can hire. Now you're, you're really charged for growth. All right. So that was a lot of coverage in a short time. Questions, yeah. comments, through to Mark? Yeah. Or does it hit you? Yeah. I, um, that's a, a good, um, that was a good answer. So yeah, it was a good answer. And, um, so that's motivate me, uh, that I, I I'm on a, I'm on a, um, right away uh, to the, go to the next level. So, uh, because all the people that uh, work, work uh, for the company. So, um, yeah, we always uh, um, tell them, so uh, while we're here, do your best, you know, be happy. So if you go to the different company, so, uh, um, so just, um, so just uh, take with you the good experience, you know, that you had with the venue business house service. So uh, I think we uh, and we are doing this. So I think uh, we're on a right way then. <laughs> cool. And again, a lot of times coaching is great for two reasons. One, if you're doing the wrong thing to know how to what the right track looks like and how to get on it. And two, sometimes we're doing the right things and we just didn't know it. That encouragement yeah. that, you know, and again, I don't know what your turnover rate is, but if your turnover rates already, you know, we lose an em- average employee stay six months. Just the encouragement of, okay, I don't have to focus on solving that problem. It's not a problem. I can look at core values and are they showing up the way that I want to show them or work on my hiring funnel? Do I have enough applicants to grow at the rate that I want to grow? Believe it or not, Cleaning Nation, and of course, Caesar, focusing on the right opportunity is probably that and the ability to identify and, and encourage talent and people are probably the two most under advertise skills and leaders is I'm focusing on the right opportunity, right? Cause all your people should be working in the business, doing payroll, hiring people, putting out ads, you know, making marketing funnels, all these things that need to be done and they're important. But that vision of what's the important problem we get to solve next. What's the, impo- what's the next best opportunity we need to focus on. That's huge. Creating culture is huge. Um, yeah. And just knowing how to identify and keep talent, happy and engaged and down with your cause. That's what the owner should be working on. All right. Um, anything else before yeah. we go, Susan? Um, no, I'm good, man. And I uh, just want to thank you for the opportunity to be a part, you know, of this podcast. And um, so I'm happy. I'm happy, uh, you know, so with uh, our conversation. So I, I'm sure, um, man, I'm going to, I learned it and I'm going to, you know, be working proof. So Thank you. So what about one more, uh, just one uh, small question. So uh, we, we invest a lot on a platform like uh, Facebook, uh, Google, Instagram, and uh, Angels List. So which one you think uh, is the best here in, 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 in the United States? All right. So that's a I'm going to answer the question, but that's, that's a whole podcast in and of itself. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to tease the audience and tease Caesar with a really short answer. Um, okay. And I'm sure we've discussed this in another podcast, so that it's out there. Perfect example of what we were talking about before, focusing on the right opportunity. So the better question you ask, the better answer you can get. So embedded in that question, I don't want to say it's a lie, but it's something that's going to confuse you and, and take you the wrong direction. So the assumption baked into, I'll just pick two or three, Angie's List, Facebook, Instagram, which is the best. Um Baked into that is there is a best and the important thing is a platform that you use. That's confusing. The truth of the matter is there is no best because if there is, that would be everyone else would be out of business and they would only use that. So there are two things. One, far more important is the, than the medium that you use is the message that you use. If you have a non-compelling message, if you don't understand your client's pain, you're not able to articulate it to them, 
you put your best, you can put your crap message anywhere you want, it ain't gonna work. Um, if you have a perfect message that's gonna speak perfectly to your <clears throat> client, as long as you put it on a medium that your client's at, right? If I'm selling to women and I'm an all, all men's golf club or something, well, then obviously that's not gonna work. But as long as there's some of my audience in that, in that area and I have a compelling message to my audience, so the audience is important first. The fact that your people go there to congregate or get information is second. So again, for some, and again, I'm not a big fan of Angie's list, but that's a different different topic for a different day. But Facebook yeah, versus, versus Google versus Instagram versus TikTok really depends on your people and where they're at, but none of it's going to work until you have the messaging. So a better question I would ask is, what what's my people's pain? How can I articulate that clearly? And where do my people go to solve that pain? You start answering those questions, now you can grow. But what's better, Instagram or TikTok? I'm like, I don't know. Who are you trying to sell? What's your goal? Where do people go? What is it? You know, we have a thousand other questions. All right. So cleaning nation, if this was super helpful to you and you're like, I like this, I would like more, go to growingmycleaningcompany.com. Uh, you can check out my books on, on Amazon. Um, I would start with the five shifts to on-demand training. It's probably the best thing we've got. It's 40 minutes. It's awesome. Growingmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now. I will see you there. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.